We've still got people filtering in through the back entrances. Uh, come on in, find your seat. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to Chapel, uh, this first week of class at TFC Fall 2020. We're so glad uh, that you're here. We're uh, gathered here to give worship and praise to our God. I want to begin by sharing a few verses of scripture with you from the passage in 1 Chronicles. Uh, and it is the passage where David is praying in front of the people. Uh, he's leading a, a, a prayer, commissioning the uh, upcoming construction of the temple. And uh, he, he uh, prays these words in the hearing of all of Israel gathered together in Jerusalem. He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people, sing to Him, sing praises to Him, tell of all His wondrous works, glory in His holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in His strength, seek His presence, Continually, and David goes on for a period of about 25 verses and prays this beautiful prayer, extolling the virtues of God. And at the end of that prayer, Chronicles says, "Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord." And that's how I'd like us to begin this uh, semester of worship together in chapel service with all of the people standing and saying, "Amen." not alone if you are lonely when you feel afraid you're not the only we are all the same in need of mercy to be forgiven and be free it's all you've got to lean on but thank God it's all you need and all the people say ourselves cleaned up before he made a way to himself. I'm thankful this morning that God met me even in the midst of my sin. Romans 5 8 says that God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That ought to get you excited this morning. No matter how dark our hearts 
matter how many times we fall, even as believers, the scripture teaches us that God's mercy is infinitely more than our sin. Infinitely stronger. That's what this song celebrates. It simply says, His mercy is more. Sing it with us. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. Yes. 
you thankful this morning. Just the church, lift your voices and sing that one more time. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. All your promises are yes and amen. Oh God, all your promises are yes and amen. We believe all your promises Yes, amen. amen. Thank you, worship team. That was lovely. Please have a seat. We're so excited to have you back. As a reminder, my name is Abigail Davis, and I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs. And when I say we're so excited that you're back, we are so excited that you are back. When we had to leave this, yes, get excited. We want you to be excited to be back too. When the semester in the spring finished remotely and, and the majority of students left in March, and we went five months without having a full campus, it was sad. Faculty and staff were just not the same. It's too long to go without seeing your beautiful faces on campus. So we're so excited you're here. And I'm here to remind you that it is your responsibility to help keep our community safe because we want to finish the semester in November in person. And so, yes, let's talk about that. That is our prayer, that is our hope, that is our desire, and we need your help with this. So great job on wearing your masks. Excellent, keep it up. We need you to do it when you're in class, in chapel, hanging out with people, wear your mask, wash your hands, practice that good social distancing so our community can be safe. So thank you very much for the excellent start. We want you to keep it up the entire semester so that we can stay here. I also want to introduce you this morning to our new director of spiritual formation. He's gonna be speaking with you this morning. I won't steal his thunder because I know he's got pictures and everything he wants to share with you, but I wanted to let you know we ended up doing an international search for our new director of spiritual formation. And when we found Jordan, we just thought he was the perfect fit for TFC. He loves Jesus and he loves college students, which is really, really great. It's what you want in a director of spiritual formation. And he accepted the job without ever visiting campus. Because we were doing our interview process in the spring semester when it was a little unknown about travel and everything like that. So that tells me he's adventurous and obedient to God's calling. Because if God wants him here, he'll come no matter what the campus looks like. And he got here and he saw how beautiful the campus was. So I'm gonna turn it over to him to give Jordan Brown a warm welcome this morning. So Abigail is correct. I interviewed virtually. She told me it never gets higher than 75 degrees here. And I just thought, yes, this is where I want to be. And I visited, and she deceived me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I knew it was hot. Um, I will tell you where I'm from in just a little bit. And you can see why that's a big deal. Um, but uh, I am so thrilled to finally be up here speaking to you, oh, I'm gonna take this off, because I'm allowed, I got special permission. <laughs> speaking to you in official uh, chapel service. So there's three things that I wanna do up here. First of all, I want to introduce you to our new method of checking into chapel. And second, I wanna give you a brief introduction to who I am and 
why I'm here, and then finally, we will dive into God's Word together. So, we have a brand new system for checking into chapel this year. Everything is going to be app-based, so all of you are going to need to download an app on your phone, Android, or uh, Apple, and that app is called I Attended. Now, don't download this yet. Don't sign in yet. We're still working on getting all of your accounts connected and uh, set up and plugged in so everything automatically populates, but I just wanted to kind of give you an uh, introduction to what this is. Now, if you happen to not have a smartphone, we have ways to accommodate you. So please, if that's you, um, go ahead and just email us, spiritualformation at tfc.edu, and we will get you all set up with an alternative way to check in. But for everybody else, it is going to be through your cell phone. You will need your cell phone to get chapel credit. Once you have that app downloaded, we have something called a beacon. And it is not this type of beacon, but this is what I think of when I hear the word beacon. Uh, it's just something in this room that transmits a Bluetooth signal. And you'll have Bluetooth enabled on your phone, and it will pick up that signal. And then it will ask you, um, do you want to log this event? You click yes, and then you are officially checked in chapel. So be on the lookout for an email that explains a little bit more about that and how to get set up. Until then, this is just a brief introduction. So now that we've covered that, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, who I am. You're going to be seeing me a lot on campus, and none of you really know me, so here's a chance to kind of get to know me collectively. Here is my family, and I have been married uh, for almost 10 years now to my beautiful wife, Nikki. And as you can see, or maybe as you can guess, we hail from the great state of Wisconsin. Woo! All yeah! right, oh my gosh. Wow. We had maybe one Wisconsinite, you know, in, in yesterday's chapel. And I, I thought there's gotta be more, there's gotta be more. Um, I actually, I grew up in Michigan and my wife grew up in Minnesota, but we've been living in Wisconsin before coming here for the last seven years. Pretty much all my extended family's there, so I have deep roots with Wisconsin. Nikki is a mental health counselor. Um, she currently works in a private practice in Wisconsin and is still continuing through telehealth in the evenings. Half of her extended family is from Ohio. Ohio? So in addition to being Green Bay Packer fans, they're actually huge Ohio State fans as well, which has been so interesting because I grew up right next to the Michigan Stadium. And uh, as you will find out, uh, I have connections with UW-Madison as well. Um, three kids. Ages five, four, and one. All of my kids were born on the 22nd of the month, which is weird, uh, but also cool. It's, it's really easy to remember birthdays. I am currently, right now, in the middle of a doctoral program at uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison in Hebrew Bible. So my current focus right now is the Old Testament. But I also have studied archaeology and the New Testament. I had to decide between new and old, and I went the old route, and we can talk about that sometime. Here is a picture of my wife and I. We got to go to Israel on an archaeological dig as a part of my graduate work. Here's another one. You can see kind of the archaeological site in the background. I think Nikki found like some handle of a pot or something. Uh, it was super exciting. Before we went, uh, someone was telling us their experience. We're like, what'd you find? What'd you find? And she said, I was there for three weeks and I found a button. I was like, oh, okay, three weeks and a button. But where we were at was just pottery everywhere, which was so cool. I will hopefully get to talk more about that someday. Uh, it was a really, really fun time in my life, incredible experience. So obviously, with all the education that I've had, you can tell that I really like studying the Bible. I am fascinated by the world of biblical studies and digging in as deep as I possibly can into understanding God's Word. Um, but for me, it goes beyond just the knowledge of the Bible. I'm constantly trying to connect this with the Christian life. I want to integrate my mind and my heart and have them be united in worship. And I hope that is a goal for all of you here at TFC as well. Beyond uh, academic stuff, I felt called for 15 years now to be working with college students. I absolutely love this phase of life that you're in, where you're prepping to be launched out into the world. This is a time of incredible growth for you. It's a time when you're finally independent and you're figuring out what type of person you're going to be. 
and you're putting chocolate milk in your Cocoa Puffs and realizing that's not something you can have for breakfast every morning and like all these practical things about life. So I am I'm thrilled to be here serving you all at TFC. I'm confident that this is where God has placed me and I'm just, I'm so excited to get to know all of you and share some of what God has been speaking to me through these biblical texts. So this morning we are gonna be talking about the Holy Spirit. Depending on your experience in the church and with fellow believers, that can be a little bit of an uncomfortable topic. And for that reason, in many circles, the Holy Spirit is rarely discussed. That's sort of my background. And that is unfortunate because the Holy Spirit plays such a role in the Christian life. And it's super important that we talk about it. Okay, but first, I want to talk about Star Wars. He's so cute, isn't he? He's a little stinker, but he's cute. When I was eight years old, I first learned about Star Wars by stumbling upon a picture book in the library, and I was just, I was hooked right away. Episode one came out when I was in middle school, and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. I loved Jar Jar Binks. I didn't understand why people were so upset with Jar Jar Binks. Um, maybe I was, because I was a kid at the time, I thought it was great. Um, I played all the video games, I had the Lego sets. Uh, my son just opened his first Lego set yesterday with Star Wars in it, and I was so excited. I was like, hey, get away, I'm going to build this. You know? <laughs> Should have bought one for myself. I constantly uh, thought about how cool it would be to be a Jedi, right? To use the Force. And I can remember even as a kid, like, try I knew it was fake, but I, you know, you just have to try to use the Force. Like, what if I could get that door to move? What if I could move stuff with my mind? What if I had this power within me? And it was pretty clear after several attempts at telekinesis that that was just not gonna happen. It was fake. Um, and so now I'm resigned to grocery store automatic doors. You know, whoosh, and sometimes parking lights too, you know, you can change the light if you time it right. I'm gonna come back to Star Wars, but let me just tell you as, I tell you this as a preface as to why I think the Holy Spirit is so awesome. It wasn't until about high school that I really started to get into the Bible, and I remember reading something that just blew my mind, and I want to share that with you this morning. And it's Acts 8, 36 through 40. I only have these two verses up on the screen, um, but I'm going to read uh, 36 through 40, 40. Now, early in this chapter, it's Philip, who is one of the 12 disciples, and he's led by an angel to speak to this Ethiopian eunuch about Jesus, and he does so, and the eunuch uh, says this. Well, the story goes on, and the eunuch has dialogue in there. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. And Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Now, the word appeared here is actually passive in the Greek. So it's actually better translated as like he found himself. And some of the uh, translations actually have, he found himself. So, so get the scene. Both Philip and the eunuch come up out of the water and then bang, suddenly Philip just disappears. And the eunuch's like looking around. Where did he go? But he's, you know, so excited about what just happened that he goes on rejoicing. And Philip just suddenly appears at Azotus and he finds himself in Azotus. So here we literally have the Holy Spirit essentially teleporting someone from one location to the next. And when I first read this text, I was like, no. And I went back and I read it again, and I read it again. And I don't know about you, but if this happened to me, I would need to go into counseling or something. I, I would not sit well with me to suddenly appear somewhere. Let's jump back to Acts 2. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about Star Wars. We're going to come back to that. So in Acts 2, Jesus has returned to the Father after being resurrected. 
And the disciples are just waiting around to see what will happen next. And what happens next is the Spirit shows up in a big way at, at Pentecost, which is a Jewish festival, but now we just know this event as Pentecost because of uh, what happened. Um, once again, I just have part of this on the screen. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages and other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were other people uh, in the crowd from around that area that spoke a wide variety of languages, and they all of a sudden realized, holy cow, we can understand what they're saying. These people are speaking in our language. What is going on here? The text says they're utterly amazed. And, and they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? So here the Holy Spirit enables people to speak in other languages. So what if you were just able to suddenly start speaking fluent Mandarin or fluent Arabic or some, some like really difficult language? That would be crazy. You would be shocked. I highlight these two passages just to demonstrate how mind-blowingly powerful the Holy Spirit is. He can do incredible things within someone. Now, by the way, I say he, okay, rather than it, because it is clear that the Holy Spirit is personal. And the New Testament refers to him in personal terms. He can do incredible things because he is God. He is an equal member of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you might be thinking, for the Holy Spirit to be working in you, you might need to be some sort of like super elite Christian or traveling mystic or some monk on a mountain or something like that. But check out what Ephesians 1 has to say. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to the praise of his glory. So if you truly believe in Jesus, if that's more than just lip service uh, and you actually are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit within you as a mark of your salvation. And in fact, Romans 8, 9 says that the Holy Spirit lives in you. It dwells in you. So I've come to the conclusion based on these passages, that the Holy Spirit is way better than the Force in Star Wars. Gotta go back to Star Wars there. First of all, why, why do I say this? Because first of all, the Holy Spirit is real. Okay, I don't need to pretend that there is some deeper power that I have within me. There really is, and I can watch Him work in my life, I can watch Him work in your lives. Second, the Holy Spirit is personal and actually speaks Check out what John 16 says. And this is Jesus talking. But when he, the spirit of truth, okay, capital S, because this is the Holy Spirit we're referring to. And this font, of course, is all in capitals. So you can't distinguish a capital S, but it's there. Um, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what, his, what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. So this isn't just some impersonal force. This is the person of the Holy Spirit. The person of the Holy Spirit speaks. Third, the Holy Spirit is available to anyone. Okay, you don't have to be a Skywalker or a Palpatine to harness it or uh, a descendant of Elijah or something. I don't know what the Christian version of Skywalker would be. A Graham, Billy Graham descendant maybe, I don't know. You don't have to come from a strong Christian family at all. If you are a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in you. So we just looked at some of the more like mind-blowing things that the Holy Spirit can do. And that's important because you need to know and you need to see just how powerful the Holy Spirit can work. But what is the Holy Spirit's more general goal for your life, for the lives of others? 
It's in 2 Corinthians 3.18. And we all are being transformed into the image, into his image, with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Holy Spirit. So that being transformed aspect comes from the Holy Spirit. And notice this doesn't say you are transforming yourself. Okay, you are being transformed. The Holy Spirit's goal in your life is to transform you into being more and more like Jesus. And when the Holy Spirit's work, when the Holy Spirit works in your life, you see an increase in. Oh, I went up. There we go. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Fruit of the Spirit. So the point then is this. As much as we might want to become like Christ, we can't transform ourselves. Even if we're super disciplined at something. Okay, this is just an external action. Even if we read all of the popular books on the Christian life. This would do, even if we read the Bible through and through, every year, this does nothing in and of itself to change our hearts unless the Holy Spirit uses that to transform us. Only the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, can bring transformation. So we have this amazing, powerful, personal, way better than the Force of Star Wars, member of the Trinity that lives inside us and is the power for transformation. So what do, we, what do we do then? Do we have a part in this? Do we just kick back and say, oh, I don't need to be concerned about living the Christian life. Holy Spirit's the one that does all the work. I'm going to just relax and live how I want. Fortunately, uh, it doesn't quite work like that. We do have a part in this too. However, the Holy Spirit does all the heavy lifting for us. And I love Ephesians 5.18, which addresses this balance. It says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to reckless actions, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is just such a great analogy, because the state of being drunk wears off, right? So we need to regularly let the Spirit take control. This is a daily thing. Otherwise, we just sort of drift away. Moreover, just as being drunk leads to reckless actions, that's the Holman Christian Standard Bible way of rendering it, which I really like. Um, just as being drunk leads to reckless actions, so being filled with the Holy Spirit leads to God-honoring actions. That's the implication here. So when we let the Holy Spirit take control, he transforms us from the inside out. So how do we let the Spirit take control? How do we tap into this incredibly powerful a personal force for transformation. What do we do to maintain the state of being filled with the Spirit? What does this look like practically? Generally speaking, uh, we do this by having a posture that allows the Holy Spirit to take control. Okay, so first of all, recognize that you need to be filled with the Spirit and that you need the Spirit's control in your life and that it is He who does the work. Pray to the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, that he would take a hold of your life. Pray, take some time with the Lord and pray that he would reveal to you ways that you're not really being surrendered to the Holy Spirit's work in you. Okay, and second of all, flood yourselves with opportunities for the Holy Spirit to convict and transform you. Read a book, pay attention to it, and ask the Holy Spirit that he would use those concepts to transform you, enter into a relationship with others, just do life, and ask that the Spirit would use that to transform you. Be open to making mistakes. Learn from those. Try to figure out what it means to be Christ with other people. Serve. Go find a way to do something, both here and hopefully outside of these walls. Do something that demonstrates the love of God for other people. Be open to failing. Tell others about your faith. Raise up disciples. Embrace that discomfort. Be open to failing and let the Holy Spirit teach you. If you want to see the Holy Spirit in your life, cut out the things that are negatively influencing you and flood yourself with the things that positively influence you. I told this story to some of you and we spoke on Sunday, but I want to tell it again because it just connects so clearly with what I'm trying to say and many of you have probably heard this story before, but that's okay. I'm going to tell it again. 
There's an old Cherokee story about a Native American grandfather who's talking to his grandson, and the grandfather is teaching the grandson about life. And he says to him, he says to him inside of me are two wolves. One wolf is bad. He's anger, envy, greed, arrogance, self-pity, lies, and false pride. And the other wolf is good. He's joy, peace, love, hope, kindness, and compassion. And these wolves are constantly at war with each other inside of me, snarling and fighting, clawing and biting at one another. And the grandson, upon hearing this, asks his grandfather, well, which wolf wins the fight? And the grandfather responds, the one that I feed the most. The one that I feed the most. If you want the Holy Spirit to work in your life, you need to stop fighting his work by feeding the bad wolf. Okay? Feed the good wolf. Give opportunity for the Holy Spirit to work in you and invite him to do that work. That is how you grow into Christ's likeness. Okay, and finally, I want to talk about the big picture. As cool as it is to have the Holy Spirit work in your life, and you can see why as a Star Wars obsessed kid, I thought this was so awesome to have this power within me. This is more than just a quest to have you become as Christ-like as possible for your own sake. The greater picture is that outside these walls, we have a world that is just in desperate need of Christ and the transformation he brings. Look at what is going on in the country right now. Do you think the world needs love, joy, and peace? The world needs you, each and every one of you, to shine the light of Christ into the darkness. And the more you are surrendered to the Holy Spirit, the bigger impact you're going to have on this world. The more you're surrendered to the Holy Spirit's control, the more people will notice a change in you and want to understand what is going on. Why is that person so different? Let me illustrate this real quick through a story. There was once a glass salt shaker that has thousands or even millions of grains of salt. And one day, two grains of salt had a conversation. One of them said, isn't it great living in this salt shaker? I'll save you cuddled up together and protected from the outside world. Everyone here looks, thinks, and acts just like us. And at that point, another grain of salt replied, what is that to be happy about? Don't you realize that once in a while, a giant hand comes, picks up the salt shaker with us in it, and shakes out some of the salt, and some grains, some of our brethren, fall into a giant bowl of soup, never to be seen again? One of these days, it'll be our turn to leave the warmth of this salt shaker and never be seen again. And at this point, a wise grain of salt interrupted and said, you shouldn't worry about that. It is true that we are all huddled up together, all nice and comfy. It's true that we're in this salt shaker, and it's true that every once in a while, a giant hand grabs the salt shaker, dumps it upside down, and that some of our brethren are never to be seen again, and they drop into that giant bowl of soup. But you know what? That bowl of soup will never taste the same again. You are here to get an education, yes, but our hope is that you would emerge from Tekoa Falls packed with so much flavor that wherever you go, be it in Tekoa, a different part of the country, or to the ends of the earth, those who you come in contact with will never be the same again. The Holy Spirit alone has the power to grow you this year. And I just pray and hope that you let him do his work. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you that we do not have to go on this quest of growth alone. Thank you that we have the Holy Spirit that dwells within us to empower us towards change, to empower us towards progress. Lord, I pray that we would recognize that this is how it is and that we would flood ourselves with good and things that allow us to open up the doors for the Holy Spirit to work. And Lord, I pray that you would convict us of the ways that we are shutting the door and not letting the Holy Spirit change us and transform us. Lord, thank you that we have the privilege of being salt and light to others. I pray that this semester that these students would grow leaps and bounds that they would be centered in you, surrendered to your Holy Spirit. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
And you guys, thanks for being here. You are dismissed as you exit. Please try to leave some of these side doors too, so it's not just one hat row going out. <laughs>